meeting some new people, to speaking to a lot of people, um, but now we're going to do another couple of bits, of, well I'll say a couple of bits, we're doing one thing on this today, because um, I really don't feel too great today, but we're all good. Um, we're going to try and clean some of the engine bay, because it needs it, it's disgusting, it is absolutely vile. So we're going to clean some of this lot up, um, what we're going to do is I'm going to get some, I've got, bought some degreaser, I bought a load of new stuff from Sam's Detailing so we're going to give some of it a go, well I say loads of new stuff, some more some more stuff that I've already got, but I bought some degreaser, um, we're going to go over all the subframe and everything else, all, all over the bulk, bulkhead, um, and obviously the sides as well, just to try and clean up some of the nasty grime and dirt that's built up over years just so it looks a lot cleaner um, and looks a lot more respectable we'll also get rid of the last of this um, heat shield and off that can go as well so then we can start cleaning yeah let's uh, crack on I thought before we start I best have a quick sort out of some of my stuff bought a couple of extra bottles from Sam's these are just uh, empty bottles that I can use Rather than trying to use one small bottle, I can buy bigger kegs like I normally like to. Like we've got the snow foam, got the interior detailer, um, and obviously we picked up the degreaser as well. But it saves using these small little bottles that get used very quickly. I can fill one of these big bottles up with some ceramic boost, one up with some sort of exterior detailer or like iron out or something. Um, let's open up this big box. This is some cool packaging. It's so one thing I do love about Sam's iron reactor. Oh, let's put this down. One thing I love about Sam's detailing is their packaging and branding is second to none. Let's just throw this back in there for now. Let's do it properly. Trying to do this one handed is never the easiest, but we get this. There we go. So we've got big Sam's logo, cake box this way up because it's fragile 500 mil so five liters let's move this all back so it comes with cool little instructions on the top it tells you exactly how to do it so to do it you twist and turn this one click it up like so and then you basically you turn it and you'll hear like a tiny little bit of air compression come out and then what you do is number two, spin that around, number two is you pull the plug out, so this one here, and it's all written on there quite nicely what everything is. So it makes some stuff so much easier. So what we'll do is we are going to fill one of these bottles up. At least I know these are packaged well too well. There we go. Nice. Nice lids. Let's put that down. So what we'll do is we'll grab the top. These are, these are a new style so we'll then pull and then turn. Oh okay cool. Lovely, that's just what I need. So now, let's try and do this one handed. I don't know how we're gonna manage this, but let's try and do this. And then, we're all good. 
We'll let that fill up. We'll open. Ooh. Oh, all over my knee. Ugh. Back in a second. So let's give it all a quick wash down, including my knee. Lovely. Give it a wash down because it is can be harmful if left, or if, say for example, dogs like to lick it up. Give it all a good wash off, and we're all good to go. So that's now got some iron reactor, which is a wheel cleaner. It's good for um, brake dust. It's usually what it's for. So when you spray it and apply it, I might be able to try it actually. Let me go and see if I can find a wheel that's a little bit dirty. There we go. Perfect. So as you can see, what you do is you once this. Spray it all on. Leave it for a minute. Usually, I would use like a, um, a wire brush, or like a not a wire brush, like a hog hair brush, um, just to wipe them all off, aggravate it all, get it proper in there. But as you can probably see, it is starting to go on the purple side already. So what it's doing is it's taking all of the iron, um, and like and the, the build up of brake dust. Um, We'll do it on this one as well because it's got it on the front. As I say, leave it for a couple of minutes. As you can see, this one's got some real build up now. So you can really see the purple coming off. As I say, normally I'd use like a brush on them. The brakes there, that would be perfect to do it on, but wheels, you'll see it a lot better. As you can see, you can start to see the build up of the purple now, especially on this wheel. So what we'll do is we can just spray this one off now. It doesn't look hugely different, but you can see all the purple. Obviously, you can't see a great deal of difference there, but normally you'd do it properly. Same with this one. You can see all of the purple, especially inside. Spray it off, and usually it will clean it up, but I'm not too fussed at the minute because it's just a demonstration. So now we've got product sorted. We are going to try and make a start on giving this a clean. I've got a hose ready. Um, it's already turned on, so that's good to go straight away. What we're going to do is we're going to use some degreaser uh, and some iron reactor as well because obviously there is going to be brake dust around. So I'm going to go at it first with the um, iron reactor. I've got a, sec oh, a nasty, uh, usually what you do for your kitchen, but I'm going to use it because it's quite a stiff brush. Try and aggravate a lot of stuff because there's a lot of stuff here. We'll give it all a good wipe down. Um, once I've done, I'm going to do all the subframe first um, and some of the firewall and then we'll take all the heat sh uh, shield off and we'll do that uh, afterwards. Have a go. So we've got most of it clean now. Um, I've just got this last little bit of a uh, heat shield to take off but I need to move the ABS pump out of the way and I also need to disconnect a lot of this just so I can pull it off properly and then clean up behind there um, yeah we, we, we're getting there slow process but it's good enough for the minute and then just give it all a proper clean give it a right clean up maybe paint it I probably won't to be honest because I'm probably going to do a lot of gold tape or the heat tape sorry gold heat tape that I'll put majority of the place where a lot of the old heat stuff was um because that stuff's all foamy nasty and all that sort of stuff i know it's like sound deadened but i ain't really fussed about sound i'll probably heat up a lot of this here as well heat wrap all of the back and obviously i'll do some of the uh bonnet as well get in there slowly several days later gonna crack on with cleaning the rest of the bay we're going to take out the ABS pump, or ABS module, whatever you want to call it. Take that out, remove all the hard lines from that as well. Um, and then we can completely take out the rest of the heat shield. Once the heat shield's out, we can...
cleaning the rest of the bay. Um, try and remove a few more bits if we can so it's out of the way and just a bit cleaner. Still need to get around to doing all of this bad boy stuff. But again, we'll get around to that. I need to work out how we're gonna do or how I'm gonna do it. Probably have to take all the tape off of the loom, just expose all the wires so I can pull back what I need to keep out and then push in what I don't need or what I don't want it out, should I say, not don't need because I need it all. And then maybe clean more of the subframe up I think. Make it a little bit cleaner, maybe sound a little bit back. Um, I might just take the subframe off, I don't know yet. We'll see. But first off, ABS pump out. Um, brake lines off and then we're good to go for the minute it's back on so we've managed to get the ABS pump out you probably would have seen I have bent this line up um, because I actually plan to remake them because I want to reroute them I don't want them coming sort of over the front here like so I want to see if I can try and move I'll get this um, this out what I might try and do is drill a hole in the actual scuttle itself um, run them up inside um, I may try and relocate the actual ABS in here instead not too sure might try and put it inside the car um, at least then I've got tons of space on this side because I won't have no fuse box I won't have no battery no ABS pump it will just be on this side that I'll have stuff um, maybe possibly relocate this to this side just in the front maybe I don't know yet I haven't quite decided I might even try and get this down underneath or just chuck it in further um, might delete it not too sure I have heard mixed things about deleting these but I have no idea yet but we'll see lines and the front still in but the fronts I'm probably going to replace I might even go full braid like full braided line that way it's more flexible I can sort of tuck it behind uh, the brake bias up into the scuttle across and then down and in or something like that but we'll, we'll see we're not too I'm not too sure how I'm going to do it yet but that's probably looking like a pr pretty clean way of doing it I'll cut all the uh, little tabs off of shit that isn't needed especially these ones here because they're quite big there's quite a few of them a few in there as well a few bolts that are holding the actual brake um, cylinder, master cylinder on or ABS pump sorry um, I'm going to leave them on because I may use them to try and build a bracket just to cover up some of this because I might stick something in the corner I don't know yet I haven't quite decided but we'll see we'll get in there now time to uh, spray it and give it a proper clean up for a minute just to let it really soak in I'm gonna go and grab a, a brush just to aggravate it a bit more I'm not gonna use the one that I used the other day just a smaller one just so I can get in the corners and the little crevices just to really aggravate it really get it to uh, clean up properly and we're getting there though slowly but we, we are slowly getting there um, I got Simon coming over he's gonna help me uh, do a few bits Probably cut the um, the floor for the secondary fuel pump 
for the fuel tank. Maybe, depending on how we get on, maybe see if the fuel pump, uh, fuel tank uh, bolt in. I'm pretty sure it's a straight bolt, but I'm not too sure. Uh, we'll have to see. I'm probably missing a bit, a couple of bits. Um, probably missing one of the um, one of the brackets. I know I'm missing one of them because I can use one off of my tank. I think. I don't know if I do need to buy anything. I'll get it all ordered. Go and buy all new stuff rather than buying second hand. I'll do it right. Do it once. Use OEM when OEM is not good enough. Obviously aftermarket. Hopefully within the next week or two I should have the poly bushes for the rear subframe and all that so we can get that all in. But within that meantime I can start stripping the dash out, try and get some of the wiring in. Yeah, maybe try and splice some of the wire and extend it if need be. But we'll get there. Maybe I might even try and test fit the engine um, at some point soon. Just to line it up, see how it all sits in fit in but just so I can have a look see what room I've got see how we go from there let's crack on somewhere with it. Obviously using the right tools here. Professional job, obviously. Well, 
need some slight adjustments. OEM fit, like a glove, and I think we did that pretty fucking well. Um, yeah, impressive. So Sam's just left anyway, so he got me or helped me, uh, or gave me a hand at least, just getting some of the uh, fuel tank over to the car. Um, I've got it partially in up to there, but it actually coming out the hole now. Now I just need to get all the bolts in and get it all lined up. I suppose to crack on with that. At least I've uh, I've got the whole cut and ready to go for the secondary fuel pump. Let's just uh, have a little look inside. So you've got the original hole and then we've got the new one which lines up absolutely spot on which I'm super happy with. Let's, uh, let's get this all bolted up or let's try to anyway. <laughs> in I need to get oh make new ones of these because this one bolts up on the other side it lines up but it's just a bit too short and I can't get it any closer than that um, and obviously I need to get one for that side so I will try and order ones for this fuel tank or the car that it come off of because um, obviously that's way too much of a gap um, other than that She's in, she bolts in fine. She's all in up there. Um, the exhaust bracket that's at the back of the fuel tank, it's meant to have a hole here, but I'm probably not gonna worry too much about bolting this bit here into the floor itself. Been quite a good achievement today. I'm gonna call it quits for today. Um, I've managed to get the bushes out the rear diff the rear subframe I'm having issues with, I'm probably going to have to try and take it to a garage and have them burn them out or press them out. I'm probably going to try and get them to press them out to be honest. Because it's an early subframe, I don't want to heat the subframe up too much. And once the new bush is in, I can get the rear subframe and the diff in. And the rear is pretty much complete, to be honest. There isn't much else to do. Um, managed to get the fuel tank in. Not 100% but it's in. Just need to sort the fuel lines out. And... That's pretty much it. Obviously cleaned most of the engine bay up, which I'll show you now. Bear with me one second. So the bay is a lot cleaner. I've got rid of um, a lot of all of the fuel, uh, fuel brake lines. Got one of the old ones here. I'll be getting rid of that completely. Um, just trying to think of ideas, to be honest. I'm probably going to get rid of all of this completely. Get rid of the heater because the car isn't going to be a winter car. It's gonna not really need the heater. Um, it's gonna be more fun. I'll probably keep some of the commodities of like stereo and shit, but heater, it'll be more of a summer car, so I won't need the heater on. And it's not got AC anyway, so the heater in these, up, or heaters in, without AC is pretty fucking pointless. Gonna put all of this lot, I think, inside, behind the glove box, or behind the dash, and I'll probably put the ABS, inside as well 
and then what I'm actually thinking is have braided lines made to replace these that way I can relocate them a lot easier uh, without struggling the rears what I'm probably gonna do is just cut them here um, or try and put a join on them up a bit higher if I can get it off of this join them cut them about a bit higher up here somewhere if I can sort these out bear with me there we go cut them up a bit higher come up here and then just uh, put connections on them down here somewhere and then I can run sort of braid line up and into the car rather than trying to have an ABS pump there just to make it cleaner and then work out the wiring at some point wiring can wait for the minute just get the rest of it in doing pretty well so far so we'll call it a day cheers for watching don't forget to subscribe and make sure you comment got any ideas or any little tips and tricks and stuff or anything that you think might help me give me a shout leave a comment and let me know see you in the next one